Hello and welcome to another Science Tutor video. I'm your tutor Nathan and today we're going to be discussing the topic forces under the CSEC physics subsection of statics. All right. So a force is a physical interaction, a physical interaction which may change the the size shape or motion of a body or object all right so let me repeat that a force is a physical interaction which may change the sh the size shape or motion of a body or object. So from a practical perspective, if you have some material, say a sponge, which is readily compressible, you know, sponge is a soft material, and you apply some force to it, say F, you expect that once you apply the force to it, the sponge will become much smaller. Right? So apply the force, you squeeze the sponge, and afterwards, after you've squeezed it, it takes up less space. That's an example of a force changing the size of an object. Say, for instance, as well, you have a lump of dough, cooking dough, on a surface, and you take some cooking implement, like a fork or a rolling pin or whatever, and you apply a force in the middle of this dough. Afterwards, after you've done this, the dough might look something like, if it was round before, it might look something like this. Yeah? You apply the force in the middle and you get a shape afterwards that looks something like the shape on the right. As a matter of fact, if you'd like cooking, you can even try this at home. <laughs> Don't waste your flour though. But that's an example of a force changing the shape of an object. Forces can also change or affect the motion of an object. So let me give you an example. Um, if you're on a skateboard, you know, when you're on a skateboard, you typically, it takes a while to get accustomed to the feel of a skateboard, how you balance on it and so on. And many people are often hesitant about taking that first, those first few step out on the skateboard, that first push off your horizontal location to slide down the ramp or wherever it is you're sliding. And you always have some people that will sneak up behind you while you're not looking and try and push you off. Right? <laughs> and I know from experience, they apply a force to you, F. And if they push strong enough, you end up sliding, often at a very high speed as well. Right? The key point here is that you were not moving before, now you are. This is an example of how a force or a force can change the motion of an object. Right? So forces can change the size, shape, or motion of an object. Right? But Newton's second law simply states that if an object, M, is acted upon by a net unbalanced force, a net force, F, then it will experience an acceleration, so it will experience a change in velocity, remember that's what acceleration is, acceleration A, where the size of the force is proportional to the size of the acceleration produced. In equation form, Newton's second law is written as F is equal to M times a. Now, 
Let me give you an example. Suppose you have a trolley, a 10 kilogram trolley. So the mass of the trolley is 10 kilograms. The trolley is initially stationary, but is acted upon by some force. Okay? So you have F acting on the trolley. You don't know the size of the force, or you don't know its magnitude, but you do know that an acceleration, A, of 2 meters per second squared is produced. The size of the force, which you don't know, can be obtained using Newton's second law in equation form, because F is equal to M times A. If you know the size of the mass of the object, which is 10 kilograms, and you know the size of the acceleration produced, 2 meters per second squared, you can calculate the size of the force, which in this case is 20 kilogram meters per second squared. This unit for force, the kilogram meter per second squared, has a special name. And the name of this unit is actually the Newton, named after Isaac Newton. So 20 kilogram meters per second squared can also be written as 20 Newtons. So the unit for force is the kilogram meters per second squared, which for simplicity and to save you pen ink on writing it each time, and to show respect for Isaac Newton is written as the Newton. I'm going to give you another example of a common force which is encountered in physics, which is called weight. And I'm choosing this particular force because, like I said, it's commonly encountered. It's probably one of the most common forces that you will encounter in physics. And it makes sense to just discuss it in a little bit of detail. Weight is the force on an object due to the object's mass and the gravitational acceleration experienced by the object. The weight of an object is usually given the symbol W and can be written in terms of Newton's second law where W is the force, the weight of the object, and is numerically equal to the mass of the object, m, times the acceleration of the object, which in this case is gravitational acceleration, which has the symbol g. Now, the weight of an object is governed, or its size is decided on by these two figures. The gravitational acceleration changes from location to location. But on the Earth, g has an approximate value which is ideally constant no matter where in the world you go, of approximately 10 meters per second squared. Sometimes this value is written as 10 newtons per kilogram because the newton per kilogram and meters per second squared are identical units in terms of the fundamental expression of the units to make them up. Remember that the Newton is equal to the kilogram meter per second squared. So a Newton per kilogram is equal to per kilogram times kilogram meter per second squared kilogram and per kilogram cancel, so you get meter per second squared. In other words, these two are really the same unit, just written in two different, two different ways. The reason why you may see the Newton per kilogram used is because, well, one reason is that it allows, it reminds you, or 
it reminds the person reading that weight is significantly related to the mass of the object. Right? There are other reasons as well, but this is probably the simplest one. So if an object has a mass of 60 kilograms, its weight is equal to 60 times 10, which is equal to 600 newtons. All right? A key point that I want you to remember is that the weight of an object is not equal to the mass of an object. These two terms shouldn't really be used interchangeably because they mean two different things. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Weight is the force that, that acts on the object because of the gravitational acceleration in that area. All right? So this video has been a brief video on forces. A force is a physical interaction which may change the size, shape, or motion of a body or object. It often acts as a push or a pull. Those are the two most common ways that forces act as well, so it makes sense to remember that. If there is anything in the video that was unclear, then please feel free to watch it over. If you liked the video, feel free to like and share it online. And leave us a comment below as well if you found it helpful, or if you have any questions based on the video. Please remember to stay tuned for the next video in the series as well. Thank you for watching.